And ladies and gentlemen, here we go. I bring in the one and only Destiny. He is in the yellow trunks and he is playing Zerg to the north of this particular map versus his opponent, TLO. He's in the red trunks. He is playing Terran to the east. And uh, close by air positions once again. And Vequeth making sure you are set to busy. Well, yeah, we have, to keep, we have to keep changing servers. So it resets the busy thing. Yeah, so it's always and, a bit annoying. And uh, so we do have close by air. So that, once again, is obviously going to affect Tilo and it's going to push him for the way he wants to play once again. Um, he's going to be able to drop a lot easier, be it Medivac drop, be it Banshees, or anything that he wants to do is going to be very easy and accessible for him to do so here. does make it kind of hard for Destiny to play, because you imagine uh, if we go all the way around to five bases, Destiny eventually has to mine from around the 9 o'clock position very, very easy to go ahead and drop into the main base of Zerg when they're spread out. So this is this could be difficult for Destiny, but Tilo has not scouted the Overlord, so he doesn't know where Destiny is yet. No, he does not. And smart placement of the Overlord right there by Destiny behind the eternally ridiculous Steam Wall. It, you know, I can actually see that. You, you see that? I, I could see that Overlord through the Steam Wall. Ah, there you go. Quickly scouted as TLO checks for the Overlord right there. He sees it. He now knows exactly where his opponent is. But mm -hmm. yes, the Steam Wall, which is not as high as where the Overlord is. Go figure. And uh, it does scout, like you said, the refinery. The thing is, though, now he knows that that's an early refinery. And an early refinery means that you're trying to go for a very fast factory here. Yes, it uh, does. Which probably means react to Hellions or something like that. So he already knows what he's playing against. He decides to go for this extractor first and is only mining currently from two. Doesn't want to rush to speed. Uh, but wants to get it at the same time. Yeah. Um, and meanwhile, we are seeing a scouting SV finally going out for TLO to scout that close by air position. We'll find out what is uh, going on inside Destiny's base. Yep, it will be useful for him to know that, and it will, of course, dictate what he decides to do. And TLO playing very straight up initially. There's nothing unusual about this build whatsoever, considering last two games he's gone a little bit wacky. Mm -hmm. On the three-minute mark, exactly, he dumps down the factory, and Hellion opening is really strong. There's no real doubt about that, but is Destiny going to be able to hold up against that? I don't know, I mean, he's done really, really good defenses against Hellions, and I think he, perhaps he's gone up against Hellions so much on the ladder that he is well-practiced. The problem is... You don't know if it's going to be Hellions from TLO. It could be absolutely anything. It could be a crazy transition from him. And uh, we do have just one in gas at the moment for a liquid TLO here. Will want to go for that very fast command center once again. Does hide his build a little bit because of this factory. Therefore, the Ling will not go up there and be like, all right, you're not going for a factory here. You're not going for a to Hellion. You know, everything's a possibility with this factory being here. Be it just general Hellion builds or any starport play, does not quite know yet. Nothing mining right now from TLO here. And there does go that fast command center. Meanwhile, Destiny does have one in gas currently, has got speed. Uh, and an early spine crawl, very defensive, very passive to get that this early as well. Yeah, he's just worried. And I don't really blame him. Man. He got hit really aggressively early on in game two there by TLO. And the possibility of Hellions is ever present. He's going to know there's going to be a single Hellion. And that might give him an impression. Because when you see a single Hellion like that, that usually means there's no reactor down there. So that can mean either it's just a r raw vanilla factory with no add-ons. Or it could mean mm -hmm. that it's got a tank lab on it. Researching Infernal Pregnite, you don't know that. Destiny's yeah. going to want to confirm that, and he can. He can move up the ramp here. And actually, that factory's very close. If he gets in there, oh, he, he's going to do it. Nice. There you go. He's going to see everything. And TLO picking just the wrong time to do that. And that's exactly the bit of luck that Destiny needs to really get back into this series. Currently being... 0-2 in the, in the complete series. The Link does go down, but he sees the fast command center. He sees the double factory and the potential tech lab onto the factory in a second as well, which is everything. Meanwhile, he knows that because the command center is there, he doesn't need to build units right now. No, he can doesn't. build drones first and then build around units. He does have the spine crawler as well. Yep, and Destiny is going to try and partially wall off right there. He might even be forced to, to use drones there. The spine crawler there is not up. DLO could easily sneak his way into the main. However, he's not going to try that just yet. Taking some yeah. damage. Zerglin's coming in right there. Moves around. And oh, that is nasty there. TLO able to do some damage there very easily indeed. But it's always... But it's always really deceptive, isn't it, when you see Hellions? You think when you see a big barbecued line like that, there's tons and tons of workers being killed. In reality, there's really only been six. It wasn't an entire mineral line, but it does put Destiny behind, whereas you've got three mules on the field for TLO and 25 SCVs yeah. as the CC transfers down to the natural layer. 
And uh, look at this Marauder Hellion play here from uh, TLO. Building a second Marauder as well, making sure there is no uh, Roach counterattack or anything like that. But it does the job. Yeah. Be nice and safe. He knows that he's at a decent advantage because of that. He's going to go ahead and mine from this base now as well. And uh, a third factory going down wow. so, so early here. And he's going to have to immediately take these refineries on this natural third one first. Uh, and then the fourth one afterwards. Uh, when the third completes usually is the correct timing for that. But meanwhile, getting up these three factories ever so early, it's uh, it's going to be a yeah. pretty beasty push, I can yeah. say that for you know, sure. You know, knowing TLO and his craziness, I'd actually expect him to be the only guy in the world who successfully takes his fourth refinery first, then his third. That would be a bit crazy, but it would be TLO through and through. Oh, and an early Spire, really throwing a spanner into the works now. Um, very, very early uh, Spire, and though, are these Hellions going to scout it? If they scout it... Getting rid of Kutrimus first of all, does Dario want to go, Teal, does he want to go deep onto creep? Always a question that usually says no because it is very dangerous, but... Yep, don't go deep onto creep folks, you never know what you might catch, that's a little bit of a problem. But he also knows, that Destiny knows that these Hellions are still Red Flame. So mm. by this kind of time you'd expect Infernal Pregnite if it was coming, and it evidently is not. Now we do have this armory coming up right here from TLO, which is about as standard as you get really for this three factory mech play, even if you don't know the Spire is there. And he doesn't know the Spire is there. He has no idea at the moment, but you're gonna build the armory anyway, because you need to bring out the Thors in close air position in particular. There's always a possibility of muters. Yeah, he's gone basically Thor he Hellion, so um, he's going to be pumping out Thors. He will want to uh, get Blue Flame. He hasn't yet, but he will want to very, very shortly. And he may get plus one vehicle weapons as well. And then when that finishes, he pushes out with everything. The, he's getting a regular engineering bay timing anyway here, which is at, you know, nine minutes roughly to counter any mutilus play whatsoever. Because he doesn't want to just be like, playing Destiny, he's going to get infested. You have to be, kind of be careful and prepare for everything. That you do. Uh, and so he's going to go ahead and do that. And... I, you know, he threw down a scan, actually, I didn't even see that. He did throw down a scan and has seen that there is a Spire. So he's going to go ahead and throw down a turret. And this push uh, is going to be quite deadly, to be honest, because he's gone three factories, pure Thor. He's going to be able to defend, 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 and then push out with a timing attack with his upgrades. And I don't think Destiny can hold it. This is going to be really, really tough for Destiny. Yeah, there's no real doubt about that, and it is dangerous to say the least. There is this Baneling Nest coming in, which is an interesting choice right there, and it will, of course, be a reasonable method of cleaning those Thors out. I'm just concerned if you're going to go in with six or seven Mutalists, you're going to find horrible things right here. Ooh. He now knows about the Thors. He's able to get out of there without too many casualties. He could have done damage to those Hellions, but I think he was more concerned about just getting away from the Thors at the moment. And an interesting mixed build right here from Destiny, Baneling's Muter and Roach. Well, he cancelled the Baneling Nest to go ahead and uh -huh, for the evolution so chamber did. and the roach one. He needs a tech switch because he knows he cannot do this. He cannot put any pressure on because the Thors are there. He cannot get in there. He does not have enough gas to magic box the Thors. Even if he did, there's more Thors than just one or two. And in comes his push right in the middle of Destiny's cross kind of build, trying to tech switch. Tilo pushes out with this plus one vehicle plating. Yeah. And uh, that's going to be almost a nail in the coffin. This is going to be so difficult to uh, to deal with here. He literally has, in the unit tab, seven muters and 15 links. Oh, Destiny at least takes some fire. He doesn't die, though. He doesn't lose a muter in that regard. So that's good. He didn't throw it at the Thors. There are now three Thors simultaneously coming along. That's a lot of freaking Thors. And right now, Destiny looking to try and flank his way around and take the Hellions out. And you know what? It's going to be really hard because TLO is pushing forward nice and slow. And that big box of Overlords is perfect, perfect targeting. And three Overlords were built and then immediately annihilated very, very easily right there by TLO. Those Zerglings can't do anything. That's a really good defensive wall. And what does Destiny do in this situation? There's very little that he can do. He's really, really worried right now. And I can't really blame him because he's about to go out of this tournament. More roaches coming in. The muters come in, charging the way. There's a missile turret at the back as well. And will the roaches be able to make their way through four Thors? Not a chance. And he's just out of there. Why not? You might as well just move back. Throws down a mule as well for quick repairs. A single four does not even die in that engagement. TLO's just stomped his way through Destiny and exploited a perfect hole in his timing. Yeah, really great. Warcraft free hero unit micro from uh, TLO here is these big chunky uh, Thor's are just tearing through everything, and uh, he's healing with an SCV and a mule as well. The Thor's are climbing their health back up. This hatchery's gonna go down, the economy's gonna go down, and so GG. does Destiny's 